We all know that if you take care of your things, they're going to last a lot longer. Sewing so machine maintenance is one of those things that often gets neglected and you don't realize uh, just how often you should be defluffing, especially your sewing machine. So in this video, let's talk about how to actually clean and maintain your sewing machine, uh, how to do it and how often you should do it too. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents, my sewing friends. It is a pleasure to see your smiling face today. If this is actually your first time here, perhaps you've Googled sewing machine maintenance and this is the video that you're watching, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and here on this channel we do everything vintage sewing skills to help our modern day sewing so you can get better at your garment sewing. If it sounds like something you're interested in, please do hit that subscribe button to let YouTube know that you want to see my future videos. Today's video is really, really simple. We are talking sewing machine maintenance because we all know, we, almost all of us, never do this quite as much as we should and maybe you're here because you have never done this before. I often put out actual reminders to uh, my students about um, like it's time, remember, it's time to clean, <laughs> clean and defluff your sewing machine because we all forget. And instead of just doing a reminder, I thought I would make this video and show you all so we can all remember to do this vital, vital sewing machine maintenance. Now let's just clarify that there is a difference in uh, defluffing and oiling. They're two separate jobs that you'll do separately. Oiling is only really required for much more older machines. So mine is 15 years old and it's still classed as a modern machine and it says in my manual, do not oil. So they're self-lubricating. So most machines, you probably, modern machines, you won't have to oil at all and you shouldn't because they're designed to be to do that themselves so it's only the older machines that you really need uh, to to oil and you don't need to oil them very often at all maybe once a month if you get really heavy use or only every six months or so and uh, the biggest tip here is every machine is different particularly with the older ones so I'm going to have you refer to your sewing machine manual for more on oiling but we'll get to that in a minute so let's talk defluffing because this is the thing that you need to do the most, the most regularly and the most often and you, all the time. So if you haven't ever done this, oh, you are in for a surprise and possibly a shock at how much fluff might be in there. Of course, the first point is to turn off your machine and actually, you know what? Unplug it, just, just completely unplug it because we don't want any, any mishaps going on. So let's get in here and have a good look. First up, let's get into here. So remove your little top plastic plate, just clips off. And then we want to take out your bobbin. The next thing to come off is this metal throat plate. So yes, they all do come off. You should have a screwdriver in your little sewing kit, your tiny little one. Now I once uh, had a student that had a screwdriver and it was this sort of like long flat bar that came around and so you could actually get in here easy. It was wonderful. Um, I don't have one of those, so I'm going to very awkwardly uh, do it this way, which you might have to do as well. Yes, this job is awkward for everybody, trust me. <laughs> okay, so make sure your needle is up if it's not already, of course, uh, and your presser foot, so you can actually get in here and then this will just come on out. And then the next thing we need to do is actually take out our shuttle. So if you have a top loader like mine, it's this uh, little black piece in here. Now you might have a, a front loader machine, in which case your bobbin is down here. And you'll have like two little black window wiper type things. They actually hold on the entire bobbin area. So just sort of unclip those and it comes out in like three different rings. So here is my big, big tip. Before you take out any further, take a picture of what uh, it looks like so you can align up all of the little pieces here when you put it back in because it is quite hard to know sometimes. So next up is to take out your shuttle here and then we have a look to see just how much fluff is in here. So use your little brush. It should come with your machine. You can use uh, little paint brushes or makeup brushes from the thrift store, work really, really well as well. And all you need to do is get into every single nook and cranny and clean it out. Use your hand wheel as well to kind of move the shuttle around because you'll get to different areas in there uh, as that um, bobbin area moves. But make sure your needle is back up at the end. 
So I clean mine regularly and look how much fluff came out of this. Uh, I remember in one of my videos about uh, sewing habits and tips, one of the uh, readers left a comment said that uh, when you take off the metal plate, do you see those felt pads that are underneath? There's no such thing as felt pads underneath the throat plate because they're not meant to be there. Yeah, so this is your first time you might have a lot of fluff and here is my challenge to you. I dare you to post on uh, social media and tag me just how much fluff that you've gotten from your sewing machine. Mm, I love to see the fluff. One more thing is that a lot of people will uh, suggest canned air to blow out all the fluff here. So I always ask my sewing machine mechanic, mechanic about my tips and tricks. They always say defluff is the first one. And they've quite often said is to not use uh, blowing tools. I would, there is no, I don't think right or wrong, some people uh, go for or against, but personally I do not use any canned air because it can kind of force uh, all the fluff into areas that it's just not supposed to be. So I always use a vacuum instead, so suction, so rather than blowing. So definitely get out, particularly with your overlocker, you definitely, the vacuum is a lifesaver. So if you have some kind of tool like that, I would suggest using that over canned air, but you know, each to their own. Okay, so once you've finished defluffing, it's just oiling if your machine needs it. As we talked about before, not every machine, almost any modern ones don't require it. If you have a wick or something like that down in the bobbin area here, if it's like soft and spongy and fabric-y, that probably indicates that it is a machine that needs oiling. If it's metal like mine, pretty much guarantees that you don't need to oil it. So if you do need to oil it, please just refer to your sewing machine manual. It's going to tell you exactly where to oil it and how much and how regularly, but very importantly, where, because every machine is different, just like a car. So if you don't have your manual, uh, type your sewing machine model into Google because I guarantee you probably find that you might actually get a copy online. So do refer to that, but only use a high grade sewing machine oil. Don't use vegetable oil or something like that from your kitchen. That will just be a nightmare for you later on down the track. And you actually really only need a tiny little bit. So a Q-tip or something like that is quite good. You only need a sparing amount. As a general rule, it's any metal moving parts. So any metal on metal is the points that you would like to oil. So once we're all cleaned out, that's the basic thing. Let's put this baby back together. So just pop your shuttle back in. Hopefully you took a picture before of which way it's aligned. Generally, it should just go in. Next up, the throat plate goes back on. And we do the awkward uh, thing with these little hooks and this thing again. Of course, if you're a front loader, just put all that back on top. Last piece of the puzzle. Ha, wonderful. And don't be afraid to just give it a little bit of a fluff up around here. Some can uh, stick there, so I like to just do that as well. Now, let's just quickly point out how often you should be doing this. If you use your machine very regularly, like every day, I would do this at least once a week. If you sew maybe every weekend or so, maybe only once every few weeks or once a month is enough for you. But generally, I mean, look at the, I do mine regularly and look how much was in there. Yeah, so it's really surprising if it's something that you do need to put on your calendar, your schedule, to make sure that you do uh, these important defluffing is the most important one. And then the oiling is on, if your machine needs oiling, is only, you know, every few months or so after that. So do tag me in social media, uh, particularly Instagram, about how much fluff you've got. I would love to actually see it and uh, see your sewing machine maintenance routines because it's always so much fun. I hope this has given you uh, the reminder that you needed to maybe get in and clean your machine because trust me, so many sewing problems are fixed just by having a clean defluffed machine. I can't stress how important Important that this is. So uh, enjoy your new functioning machine. And one final tip, make sure you do a test stitch first before you get to your garment. So right now I'm going to put a bobbin in and actually just sew a test stitch because we've moved everything around a lot there. You just want everything to make sure it's back in alignment properly and you haven't accidentally done anything untoward um, in there. So test it first before you go ahead with your garment. Okay, that is my uh, sewing little tip for you today. Enjoy. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy sewing. Bye.